dear Walsh, I'm the person who snatched, raped, and murdered and cut up your little prick teaser, Adam Walsh, and dumped his smelly little ass in the canal. You know the story, but you don't know where the bones are. I do. Now you are a rich fucker. Money you made from the dead body of that little kid. I want to make a deal with you. Here's my deal. You pay me money, and I'll tell you where the bones are, and you can get them buried all decent and Christian. I know you'll find a way to make sure I get the electric chair, but at least I'll have money to spend before I burn. If you want the bones, you send a private lawyer with the money for me. No cops, no state attorneys, no FDLE. Just a private lawyer with a written contract. I get $5,000 as good faith money. Then, when I show you some bones, I get $45,000. You get a lawyer to make up the paper all like that. If you send the police after me before we make a deal, then you don't get no bones. And what's left can rot. Now, you own his bones or not, tell the cops, and you don't get shit. Sincerely, Otis E. Tool. Dear boss, I'll keep on hearing the police have got me, but they won't fix me just yet. I have laughed when they look so clever and talk about being on the right track. That joke about Leather Abram gave me real fits. I'm down on the oars, and I shan't quit ripping them till I do get buckled. Grand work the last job was. I gave the lady no time to squeal. How can they catch me? I love my work and I want to start again. He'll soon hear from me with my funny little games. I saved some of the proper red stuff in a ginger beer bottle over the last job to write with, but it went on thick like glue and I can't use it. Red ink is fit enough, I hope. <laughs> Next job I do, I shall clip the lady's ears off and send them to the police officers just for jolly. Wouldn't you? Keep this letter back till I do a bit more work, then give it out straight. My knife's so nice and sharp, I'll want to get to work right away if I get a chance. Good luck, yours truly, Jack the Ripper. Don't mind me giving the trade name. P.S. Was it good enough to post this before I got red ink all over me hands? Curse it. No luck yet. I say I'm a doctor now. <laughs> J.B. I'm just dropping you a line to let you know that I appreciate your interest in the horrendous 44 caliber killing. I also want to tell you that I read your column every day and I find it quite informative. Tell me, Jim, what will you have for July 29th? You can forget about me if you like, because I don't care for publicity. However, you must not forget Donna Loria, and you cannot let the people forget her either. She was a very sweet girl, but Sam's a thirsty lad, and he won't let me stop killing until he gets his fill of blood. JB, I'm just dropping you a line to let, I, to let you know that I appreciate your interest in those recent and horrendous 44 caliber killings. I also want to tell you, I read your column daily and I find it quite informative. Tell me, Jim, what will you have for July 29th? You can forget about me if you like because I don't care for publicity. However, you must not forget about Donna Loria. And you cannot let people forget about her either. She was a very sweet girl, but Sam is a thirsty lad, and he won't let me stop killing until he gets his fill of blood. Mr. President, sir, don't think that because you haven't heard from me for a while that I went to sleep. No, rather I'm still here, like a spirit roaming the night. Thirsty, hungry, seldom stopping for rest, anxious to please Sam. I love my work. Now the void has been filled. Perhaps we shall meet face to face someday, or perhaps I will be blown away by cops with smoking 38s. Whatever. If I shall be fortunate enough to meet you, I will tell you about Sam if you like. I will introduce you to him. His name is Sam the Terrible. Not knowing what the future holds, I say farewell. I will see you at the next job. Or should I say, you will see my handiwork at the next job. Remember, Miss Loria, thank you. In their blood and from the gutter. Dear Captain Joseph Borelli, I am deeply hurt you're calling me a weeman hater. I'm not, but I am a monster. I'm the son of Sam. I'm a little brat. When Father Sam gets drunk, he gets mean. He beats his family. Sometimes he ties me up to the back of the house. Other times he locks me in the garage. Sam loves to drink blood. 
Go out and kill, commands Father Sam. Behind our house, some rest, mostly young, raped and slaughtered, their blood drained, just bones now. Papa Sam keeps me locked in the attic, too. I can't get out, but I look out the attic window and watch the world go by. I feel like an outsider. I'm on a different wavelength than everybody else programmed to kill. However, to stop me, you must kill me. Attention, police, shoot me first. Shoot to kill or else keep out of my way or you will die. Papa Sam is old now. He needs some blood to preserve his youth. He has had too many heart attacks. Too many heart attacks. Ah, oh, me foot hurts, sonny boy. Oh, I miss my pretty princess the most of all. She's resting in our lady's house, but I'll see you soon. I am the monster, Beelzebub, the chubby behemoth. I love to hunt. Prowling the streets looking for fair game, tasty meat. The women of Queens are the prettiest of all. I must be the water they drink. I live for the hunt. My lifeblood for Papa. Mr. Borelli, sir, I don't want to kill anymore. No, sir, but no more. But I must honor thy father. I want to make love to the world. I love people. I don't belong on earth. Return to me, Yahoos. To the people of Queens, I love you. And I want to wish you a happy Easter. May God bless you in this life and in the next. And for now, I say goodbye and good night. Police, let me haunt you with these words. I'll be back. I'll be back. To be interpreted as bang, 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 ugh. Yours in murder, Mr. Monster. <laughs>